the UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience the UFC is on Fox Sports One. With UFC rewards, where you can now earn points by doing things you already. Chicago, Illinois, one of America's best sports cities, once again hosts the world famous Octagon. The same venue that saw the Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup last month. We'll see UFC gold up for grabs tomorrow night. And there's the bantamweight champion himself, TJ Dillashaw, overcame the odds and shocked the MMA world just 14 months ago. Tomorrow he'll get to prove that win was no fluke. Against that man, Hena Barrao. Last year we saw the Brazilians 35 fight on Beam Street come to an end against Dillashaw. He'll get a chance to redeem himself tomorrow night as well. And also on the docket, a title shot may await the winner of the co-main event. Can Misha Tate earn another crack at bantamweight champ Ronda Rousey or will Jessica I claim her shot at greatness? The Fox Sports 1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts right now. <laughs> Hello again, fight fans, and welcome to the Fox Sports Desk here in Chicago. Ariel Hawani alongside an all-star panel. Brian Stan, Daniel Cormier, and Anthony Showtime Pettis. Anthony, before we get rolling, let's get a health update from you. I know you had surgery, you're recovering. What kind of timetable are we looking at here? Yeah, I just got back to the gym. I'm back training, so uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, hopefully two to three months. It all depends on the therapy, but uh, I'm, I'm pushing back for two to three months. I want to make a fight uh, before the end of the year so I can make a run back to this title. So right, hopefully before the end of the year. Looking forward to that. We miss you out there, Anthony. Man, I miss it. But good to have you here as well. Brian, let's talk about tomorrow night's main event. A huge one, 14 months in the making. Dillashaw for round two. Now, Dillashaw, you know, he has a chance to prove to everyone that it was no fluke. He was a massive underdog going into that fight. Plus 500, but Barrow's trying to regain that title, get back on top. Who has more pressure on his shoulders? Undoubtedly, Henan Barrow. Look, he was undefeated for nearly a decade, and he was systematically destroyed in that fight. That was no fluke when you beat somebody every single round and dominated him the way TJ Dillashaw did. And if he loses again to TJ Dillashaw, his chances to get the third shot at him are slim and none, which means that his chances of wearing gold around his waist again are very, very slender. So I think the pressure is on Henan Barrow here way more than TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, TJ Dillashaw said he's going to pick up right where he left off, and we all know how that first fight went. TJ dominated every round in that fight, and uh, I'm excited to see what, what happens uh, tomorrow night. I mean, TJ Dillashaw is always improving. He's coming off a little bit of a layoff, but uh, I want to see where he's at. I think it's going to be interesting to see how good he got this time off. TJ showed that not only when he's on this game can he win, he can dominate a guy that was thought to be the number one pound pound fighter in the world. Nothing is more discouraging than losing to a guy where you're supposed to be dominant. Hayden Morale had been dominating everyone on the feet. TJ Dillashaw went out there and dominated him without even having to use his wrestling. TJ Dillashaw the wrestling, that's what got him here. His wrestling, he didn't have to use it against Morale and was able to get the finish against a guy that had won 35 fights in a row. And guys, don't forget the last time we were in this spot, Hannah Burrell missed weight. So we are just moments away of finding out if he can make this rematch official. We have a great night of fights tomorrow night here in Chicago. A massive co-main event, Misha Tate versus Jessica I. We have to make him official though, so let's send it over to Joe Rogan, who's standing by for today's win. Joe? Here is Joe Rogan. What's happening in Chicago? Welcome to the weigh-ins. Thanks for coming out. We got a banging card for you, ladies and gentlemen. Get up for Ariane and Vanessa. Dana White, without him, none of this will be possible. Joe Silva, best matchmaker on the planet Earth. We're going to kick things off in the welterweight division. Zach Cummings versus Dominique Steele. Sunday, Jamaica looks for its first ever major international title when they take on perennial power Mexico in the final of the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup sponsored by Chevrolet beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Guys, there you see Dominic Steele took this fight on a little under three weeks notice. They're bringing out the uh, towel to see if he is official. 170 and a half. 170 and a half for Mr. Steele. He made it. They call him non-stop, action-packed, nice prospect out of Cincinnati, Ohio, guys.
I really like that he was ready to go. He didn't even have to take off any clothes to weigh in. Dude is always on fire, I guess. Non-stop. And his opponent, Zach Cummings. Guys, Zach Cummings was in the main event of my pro debut against Tim Kennedy in the Strike Force Challengers. I remember looking at this guy and thinking, Wow, does it get any bigger than the Strike Force Challenger Series? <laughs> it gets bigger because Zach Cummings is now in the UFC. He was also a member on the Ultimate Fighter Season 17. The guy started his career 10 0. He's a good wrestler, two time National Junior College qualifier, uh, and here back in the UFC uh, against uh, his, uh, his opponent. I'm sorry. One seventy and a half for Mr. Cummings. Guys, interesting trend here. Zach is one of many fighters on this card who has not fought in around First a year or so. First fight of the night, ladies and gentlemen, Zach Cummings and Dominique Steele, live on UFC Fight Pass. The next fight takes place in the women's bantamweight division. Jessamine Duke versus Elizabeth. Interim featherweight champion Conor McGregor continues his takeover of the UFC as he coaches on the all-new season of The Ultimate Fighter against Uriah Faber, beginning September 9th, only on Fox Sports 1. So here's another fighter, guys, who has not fought in around 11 months. You know, Elizabeth Phillips lost to Macau, very controversial, took to Facebook and criticized the judges and the UFC. In fact, she was cut just a couple weeks after that for being a little too aggressive. She flew to Las Vegas Here's to meet with Dana White and got her job back. Phillips. 135. And as you can see, Juliana Pena, a good friend of hers, training partner. In fact, she and was the one that really got Juliana Pena Jessica ready for the Ultimate Fighter. Dude. All right, for those of you at home who like this to play MMA DraftKings, Jessamine Duke is actually my pick for the best value on the card. You can get her for $8,800, and if, for those of you who don't know, you get a $50,000 cap. She's already beaten Elizabeth Phillips back in 2012 when they were amateurs, defeating her via guillotine, and she has an absolutely massive recent reach advantage coming into this fight. You see her there with her new head coach, Josh Barnett. When you get a specimen like Jess Duke with those long limbs and already decent submission skills, working with a guy like Josh Barnett, I'm excited to see what she has to offer here. 135 and a half for Ms. Duke. Has had a rough go in the UFC, but she's a big time prospect and she took some Elizabeth time off. Phillips and Jessamine Duke, ladies and gentlemen. The move with Josh Barnett can be very important. She already had good submissions, but he can really make her another level. Absolutely. The next fight takes place in the lightweight division. Ramsey, the gym, versus Andre. Tomorrow, MLB returns to Fox Sports 1 with a doubleheader beginning with an interleague rivalry as the Athletics battle the Giants, followed by the Braves taking on the NL Central leading Cardinals. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. So Andrew Hallbrook is coming in on less than a month's notice, but I was speaking to his coach Chris Lytle this morning. He told me they were already training him for a boxing match. So all, he was in great shape. All First they had to do is say, hey, it's going to be an MMA fight. So he comes in very well prepared for this fight, although on short notice. 155 and a half. 10 and 0, guys. And his opponent, He's only gone out of the first round Jim. once. Unbelievable. As Brian said, Ramsey's opponent took this fight on short notice. So in talking to guys from Ramsey's camp, they said he started his camp out in Tahoe before the UFC fight out in Mexico. So he believes that his cardio by training at altitude will allow him to take his opponent into deep water and win this fight. He will use his wrestling to control him and take the boxing away from his opponent. For Mr. Ninja. They also said that Holbrook doesn't have the experience of Ramsey in the gym. Ramsey has fought some of the best guys in the UFC, and he believes this will carry him. Short notice, training and altitude Holbrook are going to be his biggest advantages Ramsey in this fight. Ninja, and, yeah, and Ninja likes an ugly fight, man. He gets better when it becomes a little bit chaotic. Also in the lightweight division, Darren Porsche. 
versus James Kraus. I spoke to James Kraus earlier today. He said it was an easy weight cut and he feels amazing. Um, I bought him for a couple of training camps and this guy's legit. I mean, his round game is official, his stand-up's good. He's tall for the weight uh, for the weight class. And uh, you know, he's coming off of two losses. So we know it's very important for him to get back in the win column. And hey, Anthony, you're a big style guy. You know, when I look at him, I mean, the first thing I notice is that part. That part is vicious. <laughs> Is there a more perfect part in MMA? Yeah, I want to have my part in MMA. Hey, there you go. Ask me there how I do. It. Ask me how I do. Pettis would say that his hair is better than anyone's hair when they're getting. I mean, come yeah, on, Pettis. Come on, man. And guys, no, there, there you see Mark Montoya with him from Factory X in Denver. He's been training there as of late. Now, of course, Anthony has to say that the man owns his own barbershop. Yes, he does. And superstar, many, among many other things. Hey, so get this. How far we've come in martial arts. Think about this. Darren Crookshank didn't only grow up doing martial arts. He grew up watching his mom fight, not his dad. <laughs> wow. His dad's his head coach, but this man grew up watching his mom fight. Now, if that was happening now, we wouldn't think twice about it. But back in the 80s, that was very different. This kid had a black belt before he was like 10 years old. Both parents, professional mixed martial artists, and, and no, no surprise, he's got three head kick knockouts in his UFC career already. Fifty-five for Mr. Crookshank. Pettis, how many head kick knockouts do you have? I think I'm up there. Four, four in the octagon, man. But in my life, I'm up there. <laughs> if Crookshank had three, Anthony would have at yeah, least yeah. four. <laughs> That's not a lot. He's in my weight class. He's in my weight class. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we love Anthony Pettis. That's an excellent fight, ladies and gentlemen. Darren Crookshank and James Krause live on UFC Fight Pass. Welcome back to the desk. You can catch the four-fight prelims tomorrow on Fox, starting with a bantamweight clash between Eddie Wineland and Brian Caraway. The submission master Caraway is up first. This is a very important fight, guys, in the bantamweight division. A lot of trash talk between these two. You know, it's interesting. I had the chance to talk with Brian Carey's head coach, and, and he had amazing to say. He said his understanding of MMA is incredible. They focus tremendously on striking this campus. Even though Carey's a master of submissions, they're not overly confident in his ability to get this fight to the ground. So they know that they've got to win this fight with plan B in the striking area. A lot of times you hope to see a guy improve after leaving the Ultimate Fighter, and Caraway has done that leaps and bounds. Robert Falls, head coach, says the most amazing things about his improvements this camp. Tomorrow, the Guinness International Champions Cup continues as two of the most storied clubs in the world collide when Wayne Rooney and Manchester United battle Luis Suarez and Barcelona. Live coverage begins tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, only on your local Fox station and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Guys, there you see Eddie Wineland broke his jaw for the second time in his career in his last fight and seriously considered retiring. I mean, you break your jaw twice. Anyone broken their jaw here on this desk? No. He said, enough's enough. Had a, a, a boy, his first child, and then got that fire back, wants to fight here close to home. 136 for Mr. Wineland! Errol, have you seen the size of my jaw? I don't think I don't think can be broken. <laughs> DC tried and he sparred. Fox, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Caraway and Eddie Wineland. The next fight takes place in the welterweight division. Kenny Robertson versus Killer B. Sometimes you think you find something about a guy and it's gold. But then Brian Stan comes with a story about the kid fighting and his mom fighting. But Vince Saunders actually started training when he was only nine years old. Brian, back in the day, we all watched the UFC on videotapes. Ben says that he watched the first pay-per-view ever live. He sat with his family and watched UFC 1 on pay-per-view. He's a longtime fan of the sport, loves doing the job. He got his nickname because he was such a huge fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. My partner Ariel Hawani also loves the Wu-Tang Clan, and he always raps this verse to me. You know it. So Ben Saunders, I bomb atomically. Socrates' philosophy. There we go. We can't sing too much. Yeah, yeah. 
Eddie Bravo with him as well. 170 and a half from Mr. Saunders! So, Ben Saunders, that was for you from the Wu-Tang Clan. And his opponent, Kenny Respect. Robertson! Kenny Robertson, really interesting guy. I've had a chance to talk up those fights. He's a woodshop teacher. And so for his entire career, he's had to train at 5.30 in the morning and then not again until 6 p.m. at night and then mix in time with his family as a father. This is actually the first fight where he's just been a full-time fighter. He has resigned his position as a teacher, nothing but fighting now, and he's been a very opportunistic guy, a guy that people always underestimate, and then he catches you. So I'm really interested to see what kind of improvements now with a full camp. 170 from Mr. Robertson. He's a very crafty grappler, and we know Ben Saunders is yes. as well. This should be a very fun fight once it hits the ben floor. Saunders and you know that will be Kenny takedowns because Kenny Robertson. Robertson does attack those takedowns. We'll provide Ben some opportunities to attempt submission. And Mr. Ben likes being on his back. Yes. Jim Miller versus Danny Castillo. Tomorrow, don't miss the lead-up to the biggest free fight of the summer with pre-fight coverage beginning at 3.30 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Fox Sports Go, FoxSports.com, and UFC.com. Danny Castillo, I actually fought this guy in the WEC and trained with him as well out in uh, Alpha Male. Um, he has a strong wrestling, uh, ever-evolving stand-up game, and he's uh, also coming off with two losses, so we know he has to get back in the win column. And he's fighting Jim Miller, so I think we're going to see a lot of stand-up in this fight. Also also trained with the champion TJ Dillashaw in Colorado with Bang Ludwig. We typically see him wearing his uh, famous tuxedo, but those days are no more. 155 and a half for Danny Castillo! And you know, I think it's a good decision for him. He was a guy in his striking game that improved, but he was a little bit predictable. A crafty veteran from New Jersey. He will be the 27th fighter to reach 20 UFC bouts tomorrow night and just the fourth fighter to reach 20 lightweight UFC bouts. This man has been around the block and then some. And you know, it's interesting. Before the WC fighters, Anthony, came into the UFC, he said that all of you would be wiped out very quickly. Here he is fighting a WC veteran. You've been a champion. Benson Henderson's been a champion. Cerrone's fighting for the belt. So Miller was wrong on that one. But otherwise, he's had a pretty good career. Yeah, 155 for Mr. Miller. Yeah, us WC guys definitely held it down in the UFC, man. All, all top guys, you know, probably best. And he's fighting another one there in Danny Castillo. Miller, ladies and gentlemen. He's one and two against former WCers, Jim Miller. The next fight yeah. takes place in the light heavyweight division. John Valente versus Filthy Tom Lawler. Wednesday, don't miss UFC Tonight featuring the best insiders and analysis in the sport as they bring you a complete recap of this weekend's event from Chicago as well as a look ahead to Ronda Rousey's latest title defense at UFC 190. UFC Tonight is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 2 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. So there you see Tom Lawler, notorious for his weigh-in outfits. How much Reebok gear is he wearing right now? <laughs> I saw him on the street today and he told me, I can't wear an outfit like in the old days, so I'm just going to wear everything that they gave me. I'm taking the entire bag of Reebok stuff that they gave me and I'm wearing it because I want to be a team player and show off the new Reebok gear. <laughs> I've not seen him in over two years. 203 oh, from Mr. Lawler. And he's moving back up to light heavyweight and, and his opponent had two pounds to spare. Three actually. John Vellante trains with Chris Weidman, but their relationship goes way back further than that. While Chris was wrestling at Hofstra University, John was on the football team. John brags all the time about owning Chris Weidman in video games. As we know, Chris is undefeated in fighting, but in the video game world, John Vellante owns him. His last win over Corey Anderson was unbelievable as he was trailing on the scorecards and got the finish in the very third round. from Mr. Valente. Last two fights, John has received performance of the night bonuses because of his fighting Tom style. Lawler Very exciting guy, John, John Valente. Valente. ladies and gentlemen.
Hello again, everyone. We are now eight fights down, four to go. The remaining four fights air exclusively on Fox tomorrow, immediately following the prelims, kicking off the main card. It's a great one. Joe Lozon versus the living legend himself, Takenori Gomi, the fireball kid. Guys, I saw him in the hotel. I don't get starstruck often, but when I saw Gomi, I got a little starstruck. He is a legend. Yeah, man, it's just something about seeing these guys that fought over in yep. Pride that were very successful. When Gomi made his UFC debut, they matched him up with the very best the division had to offer when he fought Kenny Florian and he was up and down at first but who remembers that beautiful knockout of Tyson Griffin oh, yes. head first on the canvas Isn't that your guy it's my guy but he got knocked out by the fireball <laughs> kid I'm sure he'll appreciate you bringing that up DC you're a great friend <laughs> 55 and a half for the fireball kid. It's always great to see Takamori go because you believe every time it's going to be an excited and fight. It'll be that tomorrow Joe night. Lozon. Joe Lozon. Um, I don't say this much, man, but this is one of my favorite fighters to watch. Uh, when he goes on, he always puts on a show. He has this slick, creative ground game. Um, his boxing is getting way better. His stand-ups becoming even better. Um, I fought him before as well, and he, uh, he, you know, he's always been uh, in wars, and, and he's been a vet for a long time. So he's never, he don't, don't back down. He, uh, he's been five, three rounds, and, and he knows he's gonna be a good fight. And you really showed how much you liked him when you fought him too. You know when you <laughs> fed him your shin. You know oh, what? Yeah. Doing something like that is huge. I'm watching this guy fight Jens Culver as a kid, and then fighting him in Japan was crazy. He's crafty, man. Five and a half. One fifty-five and a half for Mr. Lozar. I'll tell you what, if this fight goes to decision, then I've got to get an Anthony Pettis haircut. I've got to get that little oh, yes. I like that. Hey, oh, we're, we're only an hour away from my barbershop. I'll you know, that clip. Hey, you know Pettis said he doesn't say it very often about other fighters. Well, just earlier, you told Brian and I how much you enjoy watching this fight. Are hey, you just giving us it, compliments? It's it, man. Come on. <laughs> He's going to kick us in the face, too. <laughs> Wednesday, it's one spectacular night of soccer as the MLS All-Stars take on Tottenham Hotspur. It's the 20th annual MLS AT&T All-Star Game Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. There you see Paul Felder, 10-0, good friend, training partner of one Donald Cerrone, cut from the same cloth. This is a guy who will fight anytime, anywhere against anyone. Interestingly enough, his original dream, guys, was to be a Hollywood actor. but now he's saying, I'm going to be a UFC champion, then I'm going to go into acting. He says his favorite actor is Marlon Brando. Favorite movie, Big. What? Big, yes. Tom Hanks special. 55 and a half for Mr. Felder. Brian Stan is not impressed. Why? I was surprised. I thought you were going to say a streetcar named and Desire. Big. It's a <laughs> Bob All right, so I had this really great idea, and I was going to let Edson Barbosa kick me. <laughs> so I called Frankie Edgar to set this whole thing up, and I was going to show the bruise here on camera. And, and this is exactly what Frankie said. He texted me back. He said, think twice about that. He goes, getting kicked by him is like getting kicked by a horse. Normally, Barboza only comes up to New Jersey to train with Frankie for maybe a month for his training camp. It's the first time ever he's done a full 10-week camp with Frankie Edgar wow. and that crew. 55 from Mr. Barboza! Well, Barboza has been looking better and better every time he steps in the octagon, especially his last That's couple of years. Although he, he is coming off a loss, DC. Oh, yeah, Barboza. yeah. <laughs> Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. I'm excited for that fight. That's my favorite fight. Let's move on to the women's bantamweight division. Nisha Kokente versus Jessica Evo. thinks this is the best job, but we have to pick fights, and the fighters pay attention. Jessica I told one of the fans that was on one of her Snapchats or something, tell DC uh -oh. to pick me in my fight against Misha because I picked him against Rumble Johnson, and if he doesn't, we're going to have a boxing match. I don't uh -oh. want to fight Jessica I. She's wow. a phenomenal boxer, she has great movement, and she has this belief that she can be the champion. Those things come together. Jessica Everybody is very scared. dangerous in this Jessica division. Long 36. So, without even having to pick my fight, I am forced into picking Jessica Eyes. Smart, very smart. 
I had a great conversation with Robert Falls, Misha Tate's head coach, and he told me a little bit about Misha. He said, you know, the real key for me coaching her was to evaluate her personality first. Then I developed the kind of style I wanted her to fight with. And he said, Misha's a girl that if you give her too much time to think, she goes third crazy. She thrives when her life is more chaotic and busy. And that's why she's at her best when the fight gets ugly and chaotic in the octagon. and a half for Cupcake! She put on a little bit of size for this fight, wanted to be stronger. Fallis told me it has shown in the gym. She's been throwing people around, taking people down easier, now being a bigger bantamweight fighting on the same card as well as her boyfriend, Brian Carraway. It's just the second time they've ever done that. And Jessica I, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's take a closer look at the two men involved in the main event of the evening. Hennon Burrell wasn't just the Bantamweight champion. He was the elite of the elite in the UFC. You're looking at a guy who can do it all. He's got knockout power in his punches and kicks. He's got spectacular submission ability. His ability to close the distance, his takedown defense, was the best in the division. And TJ Dillashaw changed all of that in one night. Um time bom para lutar naquele momento, né? Acho que Que foi o dia do cara, né? You know, it's tough for him. I mean, he hasn't lost in 10 years, so in his mind, there's got to be something that went wrong. And really, it comes down to that I'm, I was the better fighter. Burrell, he wants to get in there and erase that memory. Reaffirm himself, not just as the champion, but as one of the best fighters in the world today. I think he turned into a guy more focused than he was, more centered. So he can expect a Renan Barão completely different. For TJ Dillashaw, it's his opportunity to show that that first fight was not a fluke, that he truly is the best fighter in the world at 135 pounds. I feel like that I've got the, the recipe and I know how to beat him and I'm going to continue right where I left off. I think that that moment was that moment, it passed, and bring this title to the Brazil at all cost. He can say all these things he wants, he can pump himself up, but ultimately it comes down to you being able to prove it the night of. You know, I know I'm, I'm the champion, I know I'm going to win. Moment of truth, guys, for Henan Burrell. Remember, prior to UFC 177, he missed weight. His coach today, Andre Pedaneris, tweeted that he is on weight. Yesterday, he told me he's 138. Hopefully, for his sake, no problems here, because remember, prior to that fight against TJ Dillashaw at UFC 173, he had not lost in nine years, a 35 fight unbeaten streak, a 22 fight win streak. Seems confident. 35 and a half. 135 and a there half for the former champion. Well done. Well, that's a big win for Hidden Barrow. That's a big win. To begin with, that is a big win for Hidden Barrow. And Hitter his opponent, the reigning, defending, undisputed bantamweight champion of the but no, world. But no towel, no nothing. Just confident got on the scale. Did he say 135 and a half or and 135? You have to be exact in a Well, that's not a win. That is not a win. He has to make 135 on the dot. That's the worst feeling ever. He's got two hours to make the weight. All right, I'm being informed they're going to have to weigh him in again. You want to take the shorts? All right, they're going to do it again. Towel. He'll take off the shorts. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen those shorts weigh yeah. 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 plenty yeah, of times. Yeah, he'll take off the shorts. Hopefully Remember, he has some heavy underwear. <laughs> if he misses the weight, it's still a title fight for TJ Dillashaw, not one for him. So a lot at stake here, obviously. 135! There, there you go. go. There Joe's go. enthusiasm yeah. had everybody yeah. excited for hitting Durrell. We, we all willed him to that 135. <laughs> You've seen it. A lot of these scales only react in half pounds. Yes. They don't go by points, so the underwear doesn't weigh half a pound. He was sure. just right, right yes. on the edge. All's well that ends well. his opponent, the reigning, descending, undisputed bantamweight champion of the world, T.J. Dillashaw! 
He's in a dealer cell. He looks hungry, motivated. He comes from a wrestling background, but he puts it all together so well. And this guy takes the angles. He has the speed. He has the power. He has the kicking, the punching, his wrestling. Um, this guy has it all. I mean, and he's still hungry at, at, at where he's at now. So I'm excited to see TJ perform. I mean, it's crazy. He had five fights when he came into the UFC. Five. That's it. I mean, he's still very new and young in this sport. Only John Jones, I believe, came into the sport and made the kind of storm that he did and took the belt so quickly. Got ourselves a title good. fight. Yep, official title fight. Dillashaw looks great, man. Doesn't look stuck down. He looks good. All right, I'm here with the challenger. Hen and Burrell, this is your opportunity to try to regain that belt. Give us your thoughts on TJ as an opponent and what tomorrow night means to you. As an opportunity to retomar your cinturão. É, o que você achou do TJ e dessa oportunidade? Estou muito feliz com a minha oportunidade. Amanhã é outra história, pode ter certeza. I'm very happy with this opportunity and tomorrow is going to be another day. Good luck to you, sir. Can't wait to see the fight. Hannah Burrell, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with the champ. TJ, your first fight was one of the greatest victories of your career. The greatest and a, a huge fight for the Bantamweight division. As a champion, how do you feel about this fight? How do you feel about the opportunity to fight him one more time? You know, I'm confident. I'm aware of what he's bringing to the table. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be my fight. You know, I'm going to continue where I left off. Be around 6 to 10, just like I said. Can't wait to see it, sir. Good luck to you. TJ Dillashaw, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you all tomorrow night live on Fox. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Brian? We made it. Initial thoughts. Oh, well, I'll tell you, my initial thoughts are Henan Brown. I mean, he, he looked solid. Having cut all that weight, it's very difficult when you speak not to have a dry and really mm. hoarse voice. He sounded what good. This guy is notorious. He had some brutal, brutal cuts. A five-round fight that's going to be action-packed, and he's got to be cutting off that octagon with TJ Dillashaw. He needs to have his energy. He needs to be in shape, and it looks like he is. Yeah, he does. He looked a lot better than he has at weigh-ins in the past. We've seen Henan Brown really struggle every time he walks up to the scale. You can almost see the concern in his face as he's going today. He did not have that. He seemed very confident that he was going to make the weight, and he did. Uh, gonna be excited fight tomorrow. Dillashaw always looks good at the weigh-ins. Guy has an unbelievable diet. Uh, both guys look good. Yeah, Dillashaw always stays in shape, man. He's always strict on his diet. Uh, I feel like Henning, uh, that's a big, that's probably a big, as big as fight tomorrow night as it is on the scale for him, man. So uh, glad he made weight. We got this title fight happening. You guys, this can't be said enough. We have a free title fight tomorrow. Yeah. This day and age, that doesn't happen very often. A free title fight, a huge rematch. Very much looking forward to that. And we've got an entire day of UFC coverage tomorrow, starting with the pre-fight show at 5 Eastern on Fox Sports Go, FoxSports.com, and UFC.com. Then switch it over to Fox for the prelims at 6, main card at 8, and then head over to Fox Sports 1 for the post-fight show. Stay right here, guys, because...